without any further ado, I'll give the floor to uh, Dr. Carlos Lopez, uh, and the Secretary General of the uh, UN uh, ECA and the Executive Secretary of the uh, Economic Commission for Africa to give us uh, his uh, statement. Uh, I give you the floor. Uh, good afternoon. As you can see, I don't have a paper with me. That is because you have worked very hard, and uh, we all have worked very hard, and therefore there is not much that I can add but to thank all that have participated so actively in this conference, and also uh, to associate myself with the words that the chairperson is going to pronounce. Uh, I think we had a great opportunity for us to put in the agenda this need for synchrony and need for alignment between Africa's priorities and interests with the Agenda 2030 coming from the United Nations. And this was the major achievement of this conference. I think we have a body of resolutions that is testimony to that achievement. And I think we had a great time discussing intellectually in, the, in terms of policy making, policy, policy design, a number of very interesting themes that are going to keep us busy in the coming year. And I'm very grateful that we had that opportunity and that we can go all with the feeling that we had some fulfillment in relation to our expectations. So I thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies, members of the Africa Forum, Chairperson of the Bureau of Finance Ministers, uh, my brother Carlos Ministers, Central Bank Governors, Honorable Guests, and Delegates and Officials. It gives me great pleasure to make these closing remarks following the successful joint meeting. We've had a week packed with meetings all focused on the central question of our time, how to achieve economic transformation in order to change the lives of African men, women, children, young and old, urban and rural for the better. Hence our discussions in our critical African priorities and skills, industrialization, infrastructure development, intra-African trade, agriculture and agro-processing. The wealth of information, the diversity of views and experiences shared, the lessons learned, the commitments undertaken, as well as the political determination garnered during these meetings are extremely useful, not only for our individual countries and institutions, but for the entire world, as these will facilitate Africa's implementation of both Agenda 2063 and Sustainable Development Goals. As we have heard so often during these meetings that when we implement Agenda 2063, we will be implementing the SDGs as well. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is clear that implementation on a number of priorities of Agenda 2063 and the approaches discussed in this forum have started at country levels between countries in the RECs and co at the continental level. So this forum of ministers is therefore going to be increasingly becoming a platform for sharing experience, but of course we also need to do more. As we therefore renew our implementation efforts, let me emphasize a few things. It's essential for African countries to domesticate Agenda 2063 and its 10-year plan with their national development plans with beyond the 23 countries and RECs that have already started. And of course, as ministers responsible for finance and planning, your leadership is going to be critical. 
Secondly, there is a need to speed up the alignment of Agenda 2063 and SDGs, as, and as been said, and therefore we hope that as we go back home, this will be one of the priorities. And we must also make sure that the indicators are aligned for both frameworks. And as was discussed in one of the panels, that the indicators must be easy to monitor and, al and align with the partners also, making sure that the partners uh, work in a coherent and aligned manner so that we don't place an, an onerous burden of multiple reporting on countries. Thirdly, the success of the both Agenda 2063 and SDGs can only be guaranteed if the implementation processes, the project and delivery mechanisms include women and youth. The empowerment of women and youth are not acts of charity. They are the essential ingredient, ingredient to success and an imperative for our development. Fourth, the need for a mindset change. We need to continue believing in ourselves, in our capacities and the capacities of our people. It is said that when you believe that you can, you find ways to do. If you think you cannot, you find excuses why you cannot. So Africa does not lack the resources, Africa does not lack the finances needed to spare its development. It is that Africa is not using its resources effectively, not collecting as much revenue as it should through an efficient and broad-based tax regime. We are also bleeding through the illicit financial flows and it is Africa is also not investing its private pension and sovereign wealth in African projects and sectors that can impact positively on our growth. It has been widely discussed during these meetings that what is needed in most cases is not even um, policy reform, but it's simple administrative improvements and diligent implementation of existing policies. Cases have been cited of simple administrative changes that have doubled revenue collections within very short spaces of time. Fifth, the importance of statistics cannot be overemphasized. Statistics have been Africa's Achilles heel. Our continent is judged, valued, described, rated on estimates and guesstimates which are often not even ours. It is true that if we want to know our, true, our true country's worth and as a continent and as a people, we need to ensure that we have accurate, good quality and timely statistics. And that's the only way we can also track whether Agenda 2063 is on track. Sixthly, we must popularize and communicate at national level, at regional and different sectors in the media, our programs and our progress. Only when our people know what we are planning and what we are doing can they become involved and help shape their continent. Lastly but not least, we must, as we implement Agenda 2063, not forget African solidarity the spirit of Pan-Africanism, so that we can indeed work together, assist one another, and develop together. And let me conclude again by commending all of you for the tremendous work that you have done. A special word of thanks to the ECA and to my brother and his team uh, for hosting this meeting and for jointly organizing these meetings and for the quality of work to ensure that these meetings are a success. The rich ideas and recommendations made at these meetings 
are a call to action. Let us rise to the challenge, the responsibility, and the confidence that the citizens of Africa and posterity has posed on us. Let us implement, implement, implement. I thank you. Excellence, Dr. Kosama Zuma, présidente de la Commission. Zuma, chairperson of the African Union. Excellency, Carlos Lopez, uh, Under Secretary General of the United Nations and Executive Secretary of the Economic Commission for Africa. Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, ministers, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of our three days of uh, deliberations, uh, um, I note that a lot of issues have been dealt with uh, in the course of the last uh, two days. We have listened attentively to uh, statements from uh, member states and our distinguished panelists and uh, guests. Uh, the discussions have been very, very uh, fruitful. And uh, as um, requested by the 17 resolutions we've just uh, adopted, our deliberations are focused mainly on the implement the um, development programs Agenda 2063 and the uh, Sustainable Development Objectives by 2030 to ensure their effective implementation by states. We have uh, noted uh, this ex exercise uh, will enable us uh, to make uh, savings uh, in uh, human and um, financial resources of a member state. Moreover, we have also recognized that the specificities and uh, of various countries that need to be taken into account and, and uh, the uh, evaluation and uh, financing mechanisms, uh, the reporting and uh, meet, meeting of agendas and uh, national priorities have been underscored. Member states have identified a number of you know, constraints uh, which uh, may hinder progress. Uh, we have no other choice uh, than uh, to attach ourselves uh, to the uh, husk, uh, to put our shoulder, shoulders to the wheel, and uh, to bring about a structural, inclusive, and uh, sustainable change. In conclusion, I would like uh, to thank you all uh, on behalf of you know, the Bureau and on my own behalf uh, for the, uh, your rich contributions uh, and uh, the hard work done. I would also like uh, to thank all the organizers, uh, particularly the Secretariat for its you know, support and its uh, contribution, without uh, which uh, the success of uh, this uh, ninth annual joint uh, meetings uh, could not have been achieved. And uh, while uh, wishing uh, you all uh, safe, uh, journey to your countries, uh, respective countries, uh, and uh, your various destinations. Uh, I would like uh, to see uh, each uh, state uh, succeed. The uh, challenge of a uh, harmonious uh, startup for effective integration and the structural transformation, an inclusive and uh, sustainable transformation for Africa's uh, development. Thank you very much.
May we invite the media people to come closer for the press conference, please? We have the final press conference that will start any moment from now. Thank you.